Hello. What's up, guys? Joe. My coffee. Girls, I still am not adding sugar to my coffee. Just to <laughs> reduce my daily calorie intake. Stupid thumbnail pick. It's like, <laughs> welcome back to uh, tutorials. Like, remember when I used to make tutorials? Shit, it's been a while since I made one. Fuck. <laughs> So this is a situation that I came across with uh, one of Paul's videos, right? And uh, this is something that you may uh, come across as well um, when you're editing. Paul, when he films his projects, you know, he uses a Panasonic uh, Lumix GH5 camera, right? Yeah, Panasonic uh, Lumix GH5 4K digital camera, right? I'll post a picture so you guys know what I'm talking about. So. From my understanding, for the most part, uh, those are some of like, the preferred like uh, DSLR cameras that, you know, content creators use, right? You know, it's a good camera before you start getting into like the full-on like uh, cinematic cameras that could come up to like thousands of dollars, right? Now, uh, the thing about this camera is in specific, the Panasonic, it turns out that like uh, there's a situation with this camera that I've read at the moment that with this camera is that if um, you're filming and the camera gets completely shut off without like shutting down first, you know, turning out the power and letting it shut down properly, uh, that's going to corrupt your files, right? Now, if you're the type of person that uses OBS and you do like uh, screen capture like I am, uh, OBS uses something called an MKV file, right? When it's um, screen capturing. Uh, the cool thing about those that uh, video format is that if for whatever reason my computer was to shut down, um, instead of like corrupting like the file of everything I'm filming at the moment, it gets saved, right? It just gets cut off at the moment where my computer shuts off, right? So that's a cool format that's able to save uh, this capture that I'm doing at the moment, right? Or whatever capture you're doing when you use OBS, right? Panasonic doesn't do that. Uh, the thing about Panasonic is that um, kind of like the computer, how you know, the, the computer reads uh, information with a bunch of zeros and ones and shit like that. I'm not too familiar with how a computer, you know, reads information, but, you know, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It gets all that information, combines it, and then it, turn, it, it turns it into what you're watching now, right? Now, with the Panasonic, it does something similar, right? But the thing is that it uses a, uh, from, my, from what I learned, is a M.T file, right? Now an M.T file basically is like almost like a, a text format that uh, the Panasonic camera itself is using to you know gather all the visual information, the metadata, you know, so on and so forth, right? And then when you turn off the camera, it it takes a time to process all that metadata that it collected in the M.T file. And then it converts it into a .mov, right? So what happens is that if um when you're filming and then like if that camera does not shut off properly say if like the battery dies or the power gets disconnected that m.t file doesn't process to become an mov so it stays as an m.t file right so that's something that um uh, uh i've experienced with paul is that his camera doesn't shut off properly right it just dies and then like the file stays in an m.t file that's what happened to us right and um so to fix that file, uh, there's a process that I'm going to show you how to correct it. Now, fair warning, when footage gets corrupted, you're going to lose something. Keep that in mind. Uh, with this file that um, I was able to save, there was like a f seconds, even minutes of footage that got completely deleted, right? It got skipped over, right? It's, that's something you want to keep in mind when you're starting to like mess with cameras or if you want to do like, uh, if you want to buy a camera yourself. Look into what happens when like the battery dies or what happens if the power gets disconnected. How is it, how does it save your file, right? I think it's something that people don't think about or as I didn't think about until like I started dealing with these issues with Paul's camera. Uh, this situation is something from, I guess, is only specific with Panasonic cameras from my understanding, right? So, um, but yeah, if you were to deal with this situation or someone was to give you this footage that's corrupted using a Panasonic camera that's an M.T file, uh, this is what you can do possibly to uh, fix it, right? So that being said, <laughs> let's, uh, let's hop over to fucking um, DaVinci over here and show you what I can do. Here I am on DaVinci and I'm going to bring in my folder here. So let's go to view, make this big. All right, so uh, before I start, okay, here's a corrupted file. Because I was messing with it, the icon changed for this file. But when I got this file, it actually looks something like this, right? If somebody was to give you an M.T file that needs to be, you know, converted or saved, 
or whatever. Yeah, chances are that it's gonna look more like this, right? Uh, this is gonna be your icon. So it's just just so you know. So that being said, uh, so this is the M.T file that I was explaining to you that uh, if I try to drop this inside of like my DaVinci, nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, so nothing I can do, you know, if I try to drop it in here, it doesn't transfer, right? It's not working because again, this file is a text format. M.T is a text format, so it cannot read it because, you know, it needs a video and audio format, right? I found this um, free software in GitHub. And uh, like I said, I'll add the link in the description. And basically what, what this does is that it's going to get that M.T file and it's going to convert it to an .mov file, right? So uh, what you want to get is you're going to get the untruck file, 64-bit. Uh, I mean, I guess you're, if your, if your computer is more current, then you're going to use this guy. If that's an older version, I guess you need the 32 a bit or whatever. But uh, from my understanding, 64 should work fine for most people, right? So uh, keep that in mind. So yeah, download the zip. I got the zip here, right? I'm going to, you're going to zip it. You get your folder here, right? Double click that guy. You're gonna get another folder, double click that, and then I basically I'm gonna run the executable file, the GUI. And now you're gonna get this uh, file, right? Now, before you start, something that I guess uh, you need to do is like you need to click on skip unknowns, right? I'm not exactly sure how this works, to be honest. So I guess what, what this does is that um, if there's like a corrupted section in the m.t file, it's, rather than get stuck there to fix it, it's going to skip that area, continue working on the areas that it's able to repair, right? So you might want to, you got to select this guy here on your settings, right? Now go back to repair. Now the thing is, um, you're going to need two things, right? Well, one, obviously you need the corrupted file, the mdt file. You want to click here and you want to find it, right? Search for that. So when I click, I want to click the, the .mdt file. Hit open. It's ready to go. But before you hit repair, it needs a reference file. So yeah, as a reference, you're basically going to need a uncorrupted file from your camera, right? When uh, this starts to fix the .mdt file, it's going to say, okay, I'm going to use this as a reference, right? It's a 4K .mov file, 30 frames per second, and so on and so forth, right? So if you were filming like a wedding, you know, and one of the files got corrupted, then get one of the files from the same wedding day that you used uh, the camera with to film, right? So that's what I'm trying to get at. Whatever the end results of the MDT file that you want, use a reference to match that. So uh, we're gonna click on the reference file. And here's the M.T. I'm gonna click on the video file that we recorded before this one, right? So that way the files be like, hey, this guy, match it to this. Now we can hit repair. It's gonna do its magic. Yeah, just let that work. And have my coffee. All right, so it says done. And over here it says the MDT file fixed, right? Now, uh, before I continue, which I wanna say, yeah, whoever created this shit, I wanna say massive thank you. <laughs> you know, for being a free software, you know? It, it's, uh, yeah, very helpful, right? So I'm gonna close that, we don't need it. So now if we go here, I just wanna show you this before I continue. Go to our original uh, corrupted file the mdt and i hold my pointer over there over it it's almost 30 gigabytes in size right now if i go over like the fixed file it's uh down to 22 right so that's something you want to keep in mind is that like since this was this file was corrupted there's gonna be some footage that you're gonna lose that's gonna happen and i'm gonna show you how much footage got lost <laughs> uh with this uh file let's see i'm gonna drop in our main copy now i see you can drop it in here no problem and we're gonna drop in the wave file because we're gonna need that as well right so now if i drop in my uh the fixed footage there's a few things i want to show you as you can see here there's audio spikes right these you want to be careful with because fucking like the since this file got corrupted, so did the audio, right? So <laughs> this is where a limiter comes into play, right? If uh, you don't know what a limiter is, uh, go to Fairlight. If you go to like uh, bus one, this is where the audio for like the final render is going to be sent to, right? So you want to add like a limiter. So you can actually click on dynamics, double click on it. And then we go over here to limiter, right? Select that. And I don't know, just go to, I don't know, say like one or three. It creates almost like this, like a ceiling, right? So every time there's a spike, it's gonna get cut off, right? If you want, you can go a little lower, depending. That way it doesn't destroy your ears, right? So yeah, you, <laughs> that's gonna happen, right? So by having this limiter, it's gonna protect your ears, right? So yeah, keep that in mind. Add a limiter, please. 
Now, if I play this back, you can you can notice right off the bat this thing got out of sync. It also snaps quite easily under the back of the monitor, and there is a standard vase mount underneath that if you want to wall mount or use some different. All right, so yeah, as you can see here, it got out of sync. That's a fucking bummer. So we zoom out here. It doesn't seem like it, but like yeah. Like I said, there's gonna be a lot of areas where it got corrupted, right? It got skipped over. So if you try to like say sync this, you, then you have to like un unlink it. Uh, usually, uh, you click the chain here on DaVinci, and then you're able to like uh, maneuver this individually, right? All right, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but uh, yeah, see, I had to unlink this uh, footage, and like I had to be able to uh, visually try to sync this now, right? Taking this monitor out of the box, which seems like a good idea for just about any product. Okay, at the moment that's like fine and dandy, but if I go back to these areas where, uh, as you see, there's like spikes over here with the audio. If I uh, try to play this back, see if I can get it to... Okay, see that? So basically these are the sections where there's some corruption happens. On truck software, couldn't like uh, fit, savage this section, so it got skipped, right? So basically, in these areas, we lost footage, right? So there's nothing we can do about it because it got fucked up, right? So what happens here is like if we start playing this back, the IPS panel in the front. So rather than handling that, so rather than handling that, back, yeah. So like that file now it got unsynced again, right? So we lost like two or three minutes worth of footage because of this fuck up, right? So, yeah, this is gonna happen. Uh, one more thing before I go. Now, if I drop in, like, uh, the lavalier mic. So this is a lavalier mic, right? And this is, like, the camera audio, right? Housed within the monitor, and you just need to plug the cable into the monitor. Okay, this is working fine, right? But again, because, like, uh, we have some corruption that happens, say, like, at this section. See, it's fine here, right? For a monitor with all these features, it's really... <coughs> Yeah, this section is fine, but then like it gets to this area, as you can see here, like uh, these audio spikes happen because video and audio gets corrupted here. So if I was to try to sync this up visually really quick, I don't know, let's say that. Uh... Alright, so I did like a quick visual, I tried to like sync up like uh, this corrupted file, this corrupted, you know, video clip to the lavalier mic. As you can see here, see the gaps? Those sections could not be salvaged, could not be fixed with like the software that we got, right? With uh, Untruck, uh, unfortunately, right? So little things like that you have to keep in mind when you, you can deal with corrupted footage, right? So uh, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to like uh, share with you that, you know, when you get like corrupted footage, uh, expect this. <laughs> and also what you can do to like save some of your footage, right? Not all of it. Uh, if you can save all of it, then consider yourself lucky and <laughs> go buy a lot of ticket. But yeah, this is going to happen when you get like corru corrupted footage. All right, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, final thoughts. Okay, um, so when I was fixing this uh, file, it turned like I said, I was, I was uh, I learned that this is something that happens with Panasonic uh, cameras, right? The, this um, MDT uh, file thing, right? So keep that in mind when you want to buy a camera, right? Or when you're starting to record. Paul has been thinking about like getting the new camera, so that's something you need to look into or he has to look into. It's like how does the camera uh, save a file if it was to lose its power? Um, he's also thinking about maybe like connecting it directly into, into the PC, right? So it can capture the image from the camera and save it into the PC, right? So those are the options that you know you got to think about. Now for something what we do, and in particular if you're a person that you're on the spot, you know, recording for a client, you know, uh, say like a wedding or something very important, right? You don't want to deal with this shit, right? Your camera dies or something and then, you, you know, your footage gets corrupted. Then you're dealing with a lot of like drama trying to fix it, wasting time. Your audio gets out of sync. So yeah, uh, <laughs> that's something you gotta like look into. It's just basically how does your equipment, you know, support you or helps you out to save files. That way it doesn't get corrupted, you know, like this file did, right? So anyways, uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, I hope the video is helpful. If it did, you know, there's some QR codes. If you want to buy me a coffee, I'll appreciate it. Subscribe and like and all the good stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me for a bit. Take care and peace.